How's it going everybody, Ben and Chris 12 here and today I'm going to show you how to put a handle on a hatchet and this method is the same way you would do it if you were making a hammer or replacing the head on a sledgehammer or axe. Um, you do this handle technique the exact same way and I actually just bought a handle, uh, an axe handle actually from the hardware store because I want some hardwood. Um, I didn't really know what was good but this is guaranteed to be a good kind of wood for a handle. Um, and also I cut it up already because I don't need the whole thing for a hatchet handle So I'm gonna set these aside and use these for a different time, but This should work just fine. I may have cut it a little bit short But you can cut it the length you want and what I'm gonna be doing since this opening is a lot smaller I'm gonna have to sand this down and sort of make like a little slope You can use the head of this as a reference for the slope and sorry it has tape all over it but you'll notice it slopes in quite a bit and then it gets really big and thick, kind of like it has a swelling or something. And what that does is it will keep the head of the axe or whatever you're using, it will stop it from going any farther down. So you're gonna want to make something like that if you are filing out your own thing. And also I'm gonna try to get this off really quick. Um, most things come with this, most like axes or hatchet heads. Um, it's got like this little wood piece and then two little, I forget what these are called. They're kind of like their own little nails with ridges. And these are what you use to actually secure the head of your axe onto the handle. So if your axe handle you bought does not come with this, make sure to just pick these up on the side. So first thing I'm gonna do, now that I actually have my little piece cut out, I'm going to just belt sand it down enough so this can fit on there. Uh, I don't know if you guys can tell, but that's a very small hole and this needs to come down so it can slide in there. So I'm kinda gonna make it like a pencil point, but also I'm gonna make a slope like this on there. And I'll show you guys how I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna make it too much greater than the belt sander because when you hit this on to the handle, you're actually gonna lose quite a bit of space. So that's why I should've cut it a little longer. Um, this will be kind of a short handle, but it'll still be a handle nonetheless. So I'm gonna move you guys over here so you can see what I'm doing on the belt sander. So like I said, I'm gonna grind down a slope like uh, you saw on that other handle, but I'm only going to do about maybe a belt and a half length. So only down to about there, because I don't wanna lose too much material. So I'll go ahead and start that, and I'll bring you guys back when I'm a little bit of the way into it. Okay, so there are insane amounts of sawdust everywhere, because this thing just shot out dust everywhere at the start, so I have to blow that off, the air compressor. But anyway, this is essentially what I've worked out. And the reason is because this is a very strange hole that's in here. So I had to kind of grind down the sides. So as you can see, it fits on there kind of okay. It comes to the top. But now I'm gonna have to get the hammer and just kind of smash it through till it sets really well. Actually, I forgot something. Before we smash it through or whatever, I need to take the saw and just cut down this line. And that's kind of like you can see on this, it has that line cut in it. And that will be whenever we put this wood piece in and one of these in, that'll help spread it out so that it will stay on there. So. This could take a while. Okay, so now that I cut the split and I cut it all the way down to the bottom of this curve, we can start to put this on there. So I'm gonna just figure out which way it fits best way it looks like it fits best, I guess. Um, and then I'm gonna start hitting it on there. And I think I'm gonna go with this way. So essentially what I'm gonna do, I just kinda hit it in like a nail. Most people just use a rubber mallet. Either one's fine. which I may just end up having to shape the handle up so that it just does. Either way I'm gonna have to do. But I prefer to do it the least amount possible. So yeah, like you can see, it deviated, but we'll just shape up the handle to fix that because on this one, since it's such a weird hole on top, there was no way it was gonna straighten out on its own. So I'll just have to shape up the handle, which shouldn't take too long. I'm gonna have to cut off a small portion of this guy right here so I can use this, uh, I guess, for putting the handle actually on. So I'm just gonna clamp it in the vise. Kind of just measure how much I need. I really need a very, very small amount for this. Okay, so now that I have that out, I'm gonna take this little wood piece and hit it into this crack. 
I need to like split it open a little bit with this screwdriver just so I can fit it in there. So just to tap that in there. Get a big enough space for me to stick this in. Thankfully that stayed open. I think I got a wood chip in there. Okay, so there we go. Now you can just tap this in. Actually, is that even going the right way? Yeah, it looks correct. So at this point, you're probably like, okay, that can't go any farther. We're gonna actually get you guys a tad of a higher angle. I don't know if you guys can see it, but here's the wedge and then there's two side pieces. This already I'm very confident would not come out. The last thing you do is hit one of these guys in there. This is one last splitting wedge. This is, you know, it's almost too big. I'm kind of worried. I might shave it down a little bit. This is like some sort of mild steel or lead. Um, and you can kind of stick these in anyway. Some people do them vertically like that. Other people do them like this. I'm gonna just shave down a little bit off this side and the other side just so it's not too big. I'm gonna make sure it's centered. And just begin tapping it in. So this is the problem when you have handmade tools. Sometimes your openings aren't big enough. Um, but you know, I'm just gonna keep hitting. It'll it'll conform. Okay, I think I'm just gonna sand the rest of it down. Actually, I'm gonna mushroom it. Um, what I mean by mushroom it is I can get it really hot on the belt sander, take off some material, and then I can smash it down, and it will kind of burn into the wood as well. Okay, so the last thing I might do is just kind of sand that up. Um, now here's the thing: if you happen to have had your handle go on straight, then you're done. Um, I'm gonna have to shape this up on the belt sander. I'm not gonna show you guys that because most of you obviously know how to do that. It's really not too hard. So I'm gonna shape it up so it lines up evenly and then I'll show you guys. So essentially what I did here was just test the hatchet and I talked about how the handle didn't look the nicest but it functioned just fine. Um, I ended up lining it up pretty well and the reason I'm voicing these clips over is because I forgot to turn my microphone on. So I had just a lot of video of me just kind of standing there talking, but there was no audio being picked up. So I did test the tomahawk a bunch, or hatchet, whatever you prefer to call it. Um, I even threw it a few times and it worked really well, um, and it threw really straight. And then obviously, as you can see here, I'm just kind of hacking at plywood with little swings. Um, since it's a smaller hatchet, it's a lot better for small material. So I want to thank you guys for watching, and if you have any questions, make sure to leave those down below, and I will answer those as soon as possible. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, you can always make sure to subscribe or like this video if you enjoyed it. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.